In this video, I'm going to share with you an easy step-by-step -step guide on how to build a strong steel stun tower for a water tank. This mod or method of constructing gives the tower enough strength to support the weight of the tank and by the end of this video, you'll know how to do this simply and easily by yourself from start to finish. So stick around till the end of the video. We are going to use an example of a 5 meters high stun tower that will be able to support 20,000 liters. You can either use a single tank with 20,000 liters like this one or two of them each with 10,000 liters like this. What matters is that the design strength is able to support 20,000 liters which is the same as 20 cubic meters. We are going to break down the whole process into 10 steps. The first step is to do general side clearance and removing topsoil not exceeding 250 millimeters. The second step is to set out the foundation for the tower and when we follow this drawing or plan here, the foundation plan details that the full external length is 6.5 meters and full external width at 3.5 meters. Each pad or base is of 1.5 meters for all sides, that is 1.5 meters along this side and 1.5 meters along this side. If you have a smaller tank, you can reduce to 4 pads instead of 6. Remember to leave at least 1.5 meters away from property boundaries, buildings, large trees among others. Also ensure accuracy with the diagonals when setting out this foundation. The third step is to excavate the bases and add working space for each base or pad footing. The depth for each pit should be 1.5 meters below the ground depending on the stability of the soil. Apply antamide treatment at the sides and bottoms of the pits. Most constructors tend to dodge applying antamide treatment but honestly when you discover such signs in an area with multiple ant hills like this and termites physically eating up electric poles like this, antamide treatment is always a necessity, never forget that. Step 4 is to cast a 75mm thick concrete blinding in these bases of grade 15 and mix ratio 1, 3 to 6. That is 1 part of cement, 3 parts of sand and 6 parts of aggregate. Step 5 is to cut, bend and tie steel reinforcements for the base and stud columns. Place concrete covers or spacer blocks of 50mm at the bottom of the base to create a concrete gauge for the steel. We will consider steel bars of diameter or thickness Y 12mm in the bases, Y 16 for the stud columns and Y 10 for the rings of the stud column. We will follow a spacing of 150mm for all reinforcements in the bases, stud columns and beams. Bend the chairs or separators to separate top bars of the base and bottom bars for the base. Since we are considering a base or pad footing of thickness 600mm, consider a chair of 300mm along this length, 420mm for its height and 500mm for this top length. Similarly, the height as 420mm and its foot as 300mm. We need 4 pieces of chairs for each base. And since we have 6 pads or bases, we need 4 long steel bars of 12 meters long for only chairs to accommodate 4 chairs. I will prepare a video about the exact number of steel iron bars you need, amount of sand and cement, steel sections and generally the full cost of building a steel tank stand. So subscribe not to miss this upcoming video. The next step is to prepare our stud columns. Remember we need to cast our stud columns together with the bases. Our stud columns have to be looking like this. This is a dummy plate to receive steel sections from above. These are nuts. The plate should be able to sit comfortably on the column bars like this. And that's why column bars have to have these hooks. This is a bolt. The bolts will be welded onto the column bars along the shanks of the bolts. If you want, you may consider an option of directly molding these columns directly on their tops to be the bolts with these threads around their ends like this. Though I personally recommend the first method as a better method and stronger method because even after casting concrete, the plates will be sitting on the column hooks like the letter where the plates will be sitting on direct concrete. Make the stud column fit to be at 350mm and Y10 rings to be at a spacing of 150mm center to center between the rings. You have to take extra care when setting out these columns, they have to be on level and in a straight line. We are trying to ensure that the steel column sections that we shall bring later after casting concrete for the stud columns will fit properly on our bolts. Therefore, use a spirit level to ensure that each plate is on level at its all four corners. Use a water level to ensure that all plates 
are on level with each other for all the six bases throughout the site. The building line to ensure that all plates are in a straight line from one another. Re ensure correct diagonals also. Of is to ensure accuracy when placing steel columns with their bracings and angle bars at a future stage. You must be very accurate. Step 6 is to do form work around the sides of the bases. Step 7 is to cast concrete for all the bases. Cast a 600mm thick pad footing of braid 25 with a mix ratio of 1 to 1.5 to 3. When using a batch box like this, consider one batch box of cement one and a half batch boxes of sand and three batch boxes of aggregates. Use either a dumpy level or a water level to ensure all footings are on the same top level for all the six bases. Step 8 is doing steel reinforcement and casting concrete for the ground beam. After deshattering the bases or footing, do steel reinforcement followed by foam work at the bottom or soffit and the sides of the ground beam. Place one piece of timber at the bottom like this and the rest to the sides. Consider ground beam of thickness 500 mm thick for all sides and concrete of grade 25 that is of mixed ratio 1 to 1 and a half to 3. Whenever you're casting concrete, remember to cover these bolt heads to avoid cement from setting on the bolt threads. At this point, you can consider protruding these stud columns to be longer like this or flat on level with the beam like this. After casting concrete for the beams, Wait for a minimum of 14 days to allow concrete to gain its full strength before adding other steel sections on top. During this period, you have to do extensive curing that is 4 times a day to ensure maximum full strength for the concrete. The ninth step is doing rendering to the external surfaces of the ground beam. After 14 days of concrete drying and curing, Render the external surfaces of the ground beam properly to give a smooth surface finish and make all corners look good. A steel fraught finish is better. Backfill the sides of the beams with maram and do necessary compacting. The tenth step, which is the last step, is to erect the steel sections, which involves necessary welding, erecting steel columns, fixing primary beams and secondary beams. The first thing to do when erecting the steel sections is to first join these two columns along each row together from the ground. This is what I mean. Join the columns that are meant to be here and here, here and here, then here and here. We join them from the ground and then we add in the bracings later. We drill all the holes on the angle bars and gasset plates from the ground using this machine. All holes on angles and gasset plates have to be of diameter 18 millimeters. Steel should also be of grade 43. We will first erect T-section columns, ones looking like this. The T-section columns are fixed with nuts on the firm bolts that we are casted with the stud columns, followed by fixing angle bar bracings. When I say angle bar section, I mean sections of this shape. We use a spanner of 30 mm to tie the nuts when making steel connections. These bracings provide stability for the columns, they connect one column to another. The next step is to place the primary beams, one this side and another this side, followed by placing the secondary beams. Fix the metal sheeting roof slab where the tank will sit and also weld a safety cage around the tank. Finally, you may now place your tank. If you're considering a single 20,000 liters tank, you may place it now. Or if you're considering two tanks that make a total capacity of 20,000 liters, you may place them at this stage. Consider welding ladders onto the tower to allow access to the tanks from the ground. Lastly, paint the tower according to the structure engineer's details. That's the end of our day's video, I hope you get something from it right away from excavation to steel reinforcement to casting concrete to welding to tying steel section till the day when we place our tanks. I hope you enjoy it. Our next video will be exposing the total or general cost for this tank stand tower. I will also make another video on how to build a solar stand like this. This solar system pumps water from the ground to fill these reservoir tanks. Subscribe not to miss these upcoming videos. Thank you so much for watching.